Hello and welcome to the Kerno Cast, where I, Lewis Pauling, talks to people from all walks of life from across the duchy. We are particularly focusing on Cornwall's entrepreneurs, their businesses, and how they contribute to the county. But we're not going to forget about those unsung heroes that power our community. We are here to spread the word of all these organisations so that you can get involved within your community or support that local business that you didn't know was just around the corner. So join me on a journey around the county from the comfort of your car, armchair or wherever else you might listen. Cheers, my dears. Hello everybody and welcome to episode one of the Kerner Cast with me, Lewis Pauling. And this, is w- this episode is with my best friend, Shane Looker, who is an accountant for Cornish Concrete Products. Um, I thought I'd do my first episode or my first podcast with, you know, a very close friend because, well, it's, a, it's quite nerve wracking actually, to, like setting all his equipment up and stuff, and um, trying to, you know, do something new for the first time. And it shows in this conversation because I did make a mistake. I set all the equipment up. I'm listening, thinking, oh, this is perfect. And then it turns out that I'd um, had the inputs all wrong, so I didn't actually record through the microphone I'd set up. I recorded through the laptop microphone. So sometimes I do wonder if you can actually hear Shane that well but I didn't notice until afterwards and I started editing it and putting all these bits and bobs in so um I do apologize for that um if you can bear with it then that's great thank you for for spending your time with me and my friend um and if it does get a little bit boring you can't deal with it or whatever then that's fine go check out episode number two um that one i've actually managed to get right and i'm quite glad i managed to if i'm going to make a mistake i make the mistake on the very first episode so i don't make it again um but without any further ado please welcome my friend shane looker everybody to the Kerno cast with me Lewis Pauling and my guest Shane Looker. Hello. Hi. Good Hi. Evening. Thanks mate for doing this. Uh, you're not nervous at all are you? A little. Yeah. I'm you... sure of the questions to follow. <laughs> oh you'll be alright. Um, I'm going to kick this off with an easy question though. Uh, could you describe yourself in one word? Ooh, tough one. Calculated. Calculated? Okay that's a, I think mean, that's really quite close. I was going to go with Moomin, but that's fine. (laughs) Yeah, physical appearance, maybe. (laughs) So for all you listeners, you can can have a picture of Shane's face now, a big white face. (laughs) Off off white, slight tan, (laughs) Cornish weather. (laughs) What tan? (laughs) Uh, Okay, so I can get away with taking the mick out of you, though, can't I? Because, well... You're my best mate, really, aren't you? Yep, your stag do still to come, so... I'm not getting married yet. <laughs> Shit, he's in the other room. <laughs> um, so, can you tell everybody how we met? Uh, well, school. School, yeah, walking to school many years ago. How old are we now? What, 27? Yeah. 12, would you say? Yeah, 12, 13, something like that, yeah. yeah. Quite a while ago. Many moons. Many moons. Many yeah. moons ago. So now you're 27, uh, and you're working for Cornish Concrete Products. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And what do you do for them? I'm an accountant for them. How exciting! It is exciting. It's thrilling stuff. It's uh, genuinely enjoyable. Is it? What? Yeah. What yeah, is it? That's... All joking aside, and the bad stereotype that goes with being an accountant, but no, it's it's quite interesting. Yeah. What what is it that's exciting about being an accountant? I can't imagine just counting around being that interesting. But yeah, that's my simple mind. That's that's the um, that's kind of how it is, really. I think a lot of people don't really know what an accountant does, actually. And I think an accountant in, in practice and accountant in the industry are 
two completely different things. And, um, so having just moved out of practice into industry within the last couple of months, it's it's been a nice change. Um, certainly, no no two days are the same. Mm. I think that's that's probably the most enjoyable part about the job. Well, uh, each day is different. Yeah, new challenges. Mm. So, what kind of things do you come across each day then? Because I could just imagine you, particularly in the old life where in practice, that it was just sitting in front of the computer on a spreadsheet all day, tapping away. Yep, you'd, Whereas, be, you'd be right. There's a lot of spreadsheet work. Um, I've even got a mug that says I love spreadsheets. My, <laughs> my good lady gave to me. Very precious about that mug. It's a nice mug. Every morning. Yeah. yeah. The envy of the office. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we, we manage a, a number of large uh, construction contracts. We're uh, the subcontractor to a number of large main contractors like so Kia, Midas, and a few others. Oh, yeah, yeah. So day in, day out, I mean, the number number one role is to make sure we've got cash coming in. Yeah. Make sure people can be paid. Um, and then obviously there are other considerations, capital investment and, and just any other project spend that, that, that's coming up. And so that's one of my jobs to, to forecast the money coming in, the money going out, which is quite exciting because there's a, a strategy element and uh, get, get involved with the uh, decision making at a slightly higher level, which is, is, is nice. And, and, and you. Yeah, definitely. To me. Yeah, fair enough. That's, yeah, I can imagine just being involved in seeing all the money coming in and seeing where it goes and planning on where it goes. Yeah, and, um, and stuff is a bit is a a bit a bit more interesting than figuring out some or doing someone else's tax returns. That's it. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, everyone's different, but there's a lot of enjoyment. I used to get a lot of enjoyment out of doing it tax returns, trying to save a client a lot of money. That was quite rewarding when you when you could do so. Um, but on the whole, there's a repetitive nature of, of working in practice, and I suppose there isn't in the current role. But it just feels, maybe because it's a new job, it, it, it's the way it is, but it, it just feels that there are slightly different challenges which uh, make no two days the same. Mm. Great. Why did you become an accountant in the first place? Um, not sure is the honest answer. I've always been good at, at maths. Um, interest in numbers. Interest in not so much money um, in isolation, but the sort of drivers that make money. Um, so I. So know, the business side. Yeah, that's thing. it. Yeah. Yeah. How how you get to the point of making making money? Um, that's that's what interests me. It's nice to see. You know, whichever company you look at, um, the ideas that people come up with and, and you know, there's more, more than one way to skin a cat, as I always say, yeah. and that is true. You see that with competing businesses who could do things completely differently, but ultimately come up with the same product and, and the results will be quite different. So, mm. yeah. well, that's brilliant, because that's kind of like what I'm trying to achieve with this podcast, is trying okay. to get yeah. down to the nitty gritty of how each company makes their money and and... Well, um, yeah, just how each company works, basically, and but we'll get on to that. Um, so, how did you get? Up, how did you go about getting? Because you're probably qualified, you have to do a load of exams. Yeah, there are a few exams. Tell, tell me the story of your, your um, rise to uh, Cornish Concrete products. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I went to college and didn't have fantastic grades at all. To be honest, underachieved, made, um, met my my lovely wife. Mm -hmm. and Where was this? Where did you meet her? At Truro College. Yeah. And it's fair to say that both of us were not keen on going to university. Um, I mean, my in, in my case, parents hadn't been to university, and there isn't that kind of discussion around it at the point you you approach it. Um, but in hindsight, no, or looking back anyway, it's probably turned out to, to be, well, it's, it's, a, it's a move that was well well for me, not going to university. Mm. Um, it's allowed me to work, obviously earn on the job, pick up the, the practical skills that 
to make you employable. Yeah, um, but also I've been fortunate enough with some of the, the later study, uh, which involved going away to the Cotswolds um, to kind of have a, a slightly alternative uni, uni experience, shall we say. Right. So, yeah. That's good. Okay. So you you said there about not going away to university. Yeah. Um, and now you're a chartered accountant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you've not thought about moving outside of the county at all to look at another job outside. Move away. Is it not? Is it not? Yeah. Been something? I, it seems like qualified as a as a chartered accountant. It's kind of like two steps. You you either go to university and get a degree, which is like three years. And then go on and do your chartered exams, which are another three, if not four years, so right. six, seven years in total. Or if you don't take the university route, you do a, an AAT qualification, which takes you up to a, an accounting technician level. And then you do your three or four years ACA or ACCA, your chartered exams. Um, ultimately, you get there the same, but it's, it's a, one's an academic route for the first three years and one's a vocational route for mm -hmm. the first three years. Um, the, the chartered bit, sort of academic, um, is hard, but it's worth having, obviously, you know, if you put the effort in, it's quite an enjoyable career. So. Yeah. What about, um, so, like, going back to moving out of the county, you've never thought... <laughs> I was never... going to avoid that question, no. my, my wife might be listening to Oh, you, you can be honest here, <laughs> she'll be fine with it. Yeah. Uh, I had an opportunity to, just after I, I qualified, um, a, a number of the people that I'd studied with were working in the city. Mm. Um, so it was like a chance to, yeah. Oh yeah. Or just outside. So that there was a, a chance to sort of go and interview for some of the big four audit firms. But ultimately life is in Cornwall. Yeah. Which I'm happy about. It's a great place to live. Friends are here, family here, etc. Um, so are we holding you back? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> it's difficult in Cornwall to to sort of get a role, obviously there, there are less less opportunities, um, certainly at the higher level because there's just well, less, less opportunities. Yeah. yeah, there's not there's not so much money flying around, there's not, the, the big firms are all in the big cities, aren't they? It's, it's, yeah, that's, there, that's, there the nature, a, that's the nature of the, the yeah. beast, if you like. Yeah, except if you live in Cornwall, that... Um, Things are a bit more modest. Yeah. I suppose. Well, you, you're, you get rewarded with the lifestyle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely agree with that. That's a, that's a, that's a great quote, actually. Yeah. I, can def I definitely agree with you there. Um, hold on. I've just lost my track a little bit. Being new to this and everything. Um, I must say, I do like your setup here. It's is it look alright? Pretty good. In my kitchen. Fantastic. With my boy's hide chair over there. Yeah. <laughs> Although you obviously can't see, but there's a pack of huggies and some Doritos, <laughs> so it's good, it's all good. It's what goes in everybody's uh, family household. <laughs> um, oh, I know, so you're actually just moving house, or you're about to move house? Yeah, we're well, we're in the process of moving house, and as many of you all know, it's, uh, yeah, it takes time, and uh, this one, this is uh, uh, moving into a slightly larger home, we've got our first home, Four years ago, which was uh, a very a, a one-bedroom house, uh, Grand Pound Road, which has been very nice. And, but with work life and social life migrating towards Truro, it's been a sort of goal of ours to try and buy into Truro at, at some point. So looking to move, and it's kind of mid solicitors. So yeah, we'll see how that progresses. Yeah, how how was it looking for the house in Truro and stuff? Is, do you find how different was it to Finding your place in Grand Pound Road. Um, I mean, it's, it's different. Obviously, there's it's it's different. In, it's, it's it's different for us in that we approach this this move at a slightly different stage in life. Obviously, three four years on, which doesn't sound a lot, but at this point, we qualified in our roles, both Lane and myself, and it's uh, slightly different financially. Um, mm. it's still going to be a huge struggle as it always is. Um, going up the market, yeah, um, and, and those first twelve months when we bought our first place were tough, but mm. in hindsight was was a good, a good thing to have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so yeah, Truro is obviously there's a premium to live in Truro. Yeah, 
and we've been very fortunate with our place. Uh, it looks out, and it's got it's got a lovely landscape at the back, and um, I, I, the, the place we're looking at now will, will still be quite nice. Mm. Um, but yeah, except you can't have it all. No, so, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're still young. You've, you've oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've done very well to. Oh yeah, be in the position that you're in now. For, uh, for rehab. Yeah, brilliant. So, still talking about Cornwall, as this is the Kerner cast, we like to talk about Cornwall. Um, if you could put a billboard up anywhere in Cornwall, uh, where would you put it and what would it say? I'd probably, right now, put it up at Temple, because traffic <laughs> isn't moving too fast up there. There's, so there's be... lots of billboards up there already <laughs> that says, you will be waiting. Yeah, yeah, and then, I mean, let's, let's be fair, it's, it's never going to be completed in a day, is it? It's, it's uh, something that's needed to be done for a while and you can have a huge benefit to the economy when it's when it's completed. So um but yeah, billboard. Yeah, no, I, I think I would. I'd, I'd leave it up at Temple. Slow moving traffic, a lot of people would see it. Yeah. What, yeah. what is that what you'd have it written on it? Slow moving traffic. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have that. <laughs> I wouldn't have that. Probably something along the lines of I don't know. Welcome to Cornwall would be a good start, although I think we're quite far into Cornwall at that point, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, quite far in. Um, Do you want to come maybe, back? To maybe it? an advertisement for Cornwall Services. Oh yeah, <laughs> Cornwall Services. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, there's loads of local businesses that have been run out of Cornwall Services, McDonald's and Costa. Correct. <laughs> and Subway. And Subway, yeah. Okay, uh, that's another question. Uh, out of, have you got a favourite local firm that you? use often or uh, would recommend to, to to listeners? An accountancy firm? Not necessarily an accountancy firm, any any any, any local firm. any firm. Any local Ooh. firm that you might use. You might use a uh, a grocery shop in a town somewhere or you might well, even though I live in use Grand a taxi firm regularly or whatever, I don't know. Even though I live in Grandpa Road, um, been using the Nut Hatch Barbers and Weybridge for ages. And the beauty of this is that the listeners can't actually see my haircut right now, but <laughs> they, they do a great job in there. And, and George, Will and Bart, the, the chaps in there, they're always a good laugh to be around in a friendly environment. So I'd, I'd recommend getting a haircut there. Oh, yeah. Was that the, the Nut Hatch? The Nut Hatch. The Nut Hatch. In Weybridge. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I might have to check them out because my mum still cuts my hair and I don't know. <laughs> I hope she doesn't listen, actually. That's a good point. Um... So you played football for Landivit? Yeah. The Pandas. Yeah, the Mighty Pandas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you tell us a bit how the... Because early days in the season so far. Yeah, four games in. Um, won three. Lost one. The one we lost. We, um, well, we, we probably did deserve to lose it, but I think we feel that when we play that reverse fixture at home, I think we know on another day that we've, we've got enough to beat them. Mm. So, but you learn... You learn from these things. It was a, an interesting game, that one. But no, this, the start of the season was it, it was a positive start. Good, good, good. So, because last year you were playing for the Pandas, yep. through the through the preseason you thought about going back to uh, Weybridge, yep. playing for the first team. Yeah. Because um, well, you got you could, you could play at that level if you wanted. I uh, if I was fit, I could. Um, Struggled to get back to fitness levels of a few years ago, if I'm completely honest. Yeah. Um, but I was, having played that level and, and the league above before, yeah, I did enjoy it and, and just try and, trying to get back to the level of fitness required to, to play again. And, and that probably still is a goal long term. Mm -hmm. but You've still got a lot of years left in you, yeah. <laughs> well, we, I hope so. <laughs> Who knows? Well, Ron Gibbs went till he was 40. Yeah. You've I'll, been have doing to, yoga? Uh, I'll have to get into some yoga. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, talking about goals then, um, what does success look like for you? Ooh, it depends how you measure success, really. And everyone has their own goals. Um, good question. I don't know. I, I guess it's that sort of internal feeling that you get when you've achieved something. I'm not quite answering the question there. It's difficult, it's difficult to know. I think it's how you measure success. Yeah, because so many people measure success financially, don't they? 
I think a lot of people do. And yeah. sometimes you forget that There's actually... There's a lot more to life than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Achieving yeah. the 20 goal season for Lamin or Weybridge yeah. is actually a goal or me just actually getting a goal in the season. But yeah, yeah, that's but, it. But, yeah, one man's yeah. goal is it's another man's baseline. Uh, yeah, that's so, it. Yeah. But where, if you could pick one thing that just sticks out in your head right now, what would... What, a personal goal of mine? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Ooh. Um, oh, that is a difficult one. Well, to get fit. There we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's fair enough. Okay. Brilliant. Um, when do you think you will achieve that? Have you put a plan in place? Hopefully soon, yeah. Um, obviously our, our listeners won't know. Um, I've previously had pneumonia, which is quite unusual for people our age. And yeah. um, There's all, always a, a difficulty after that in, in terms of, uh, sort of lung capacity and all the rest of it. But yeah, I'm slowly trying to get back to where I was and I think it, it's slowly getting there but it's not going to happen overnight the other thing I find is obviously probably just being busy at work you get home in the evening and it's difficult to sort of motivate yourself the motivation is as much the issue yeah um, it, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that mm, yeah it's just you feel like you've done your day's work and it's getting home and then going again I think I'm in a similar sort of position where I get home and I just want to spend time with my little boy and I haven't got time to go and do the exercise I want to do. That's it. And, yeah. But then, I think that's growing up, mate. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, so if you could start any business in Cornwall, um, what would it be and how would you do it? How would you go about it? You had any, you didn't, money wasn't really an object. No. I, I would start up a restaurant for fun. Yeah. Yeah. Amy... And myself both enjoy cooking. What's your favourite thing to cook? Or what's your best meal? Oh, best meal. Uh, probably roast beef, actually. Is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I'd, I'd try some sort of fancy delicacies and I'll, I'll have a go at those. Yeah. A lot of it's confidence if you get a decent recipe book and um, follow the instructions. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when to read the recipe before you actually start. Yeah, definitely. As a, I normally get to, told me off for. Yeah, I normally get to the fridge and realise I haven't got half the ingredients and just chuck anything in anyway. Yeah, that's why. Well. I, I remember I forget what we were cooking and I was chopping this and doing that. And it's... No, and we're back. Oh dear. So where were we? Where were we? Um, business. Business. Yeah. Restaurant. Restaurant. Cornwall. Cornwall. Here we go. Ooh. What would it serve? Who knows? Probably, probably steak and chips. Would that be the special? I don't top know. Of the no, menu? I think we vary it up a little, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you it would, would it would be just a, no? Would it be a tri- sort of your your regular restaurant with it, or would it be like yeah, a high it end? Wouldn't, high no, end? no. I think there's there's a lot of very good high end. Places to dine in Cornwall. It's brilliant. Do you name one? Could name 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 a few, but I don't think it'd be fair on the competition. <laughs> um, so I think I think it would be more some good good traditional hearty pub food, steak and chips, a pie and mash, toad in yeah. the hole, whatever it might be. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, sounds all right. Hmm, I not, not too, I'll test other food sometimes. Enough so that a price which isn't which is reasonable. Mm. No, if it's for fun, you just do it break even if you want, couldn't you? Yeah, but I'd still need to let <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay, so we've talked about your work, we've talked a little bit about Cornwall. Um, what's your favourite, we could probably talk a little bit more about Cornwall. What's your favourite place? Probably, oh, Chapel Port. Port? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, just just near uh, St Agnes. Yeah. That's where I proposed to Amy. Uh-huh. Will Coates uh, tin mine there to look him up to see. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a special place for us, and uh, that would be my my favourite place. Yeah. So if we get like we'd have a picture in your house. We do. We do. Oh, we you would, do have we would, 
um, very kindly given a couple of um, friends photos as wedding presents. Oh yeah. Which sit very proudly uh, in our house, yeah. Very good, very good. Um, what about your least favourite place? Have you got a least favourite place? Controversial. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we, it's all about controversy. <laughs> No, I, I, I don't think I do. No. Devon. <laughs> well, I was born in Devon. <laughs> what? This is one of those, uh, Amy always says to me, you know, oh, no, I'm not Cornish. Um, but there's a <laughs> there's a famous saying, um, just because you're born in a barn doesn't make you a horse, and it's one I like to apply. <laughs> <laughs> Works quite well. Um, yeah, I think there's, I've got one more question written down here. Um, if you could, oh no, yeah, no, that's not, I've, read, I've already read, read through that one. Um, if you could pass on any advice to someone just going into college or just leaving college that wanted to be an accountant, what sort of, what advice would you pass on to them? I, I, yeah, that's difficult. I, I was lucky in that I fell into a subject that I, enjo that I enjoyed and um, I guess... I guess the key thing is to make sure you study something that you do enjoy. Mm. Um, have an end goal in mind, but not one that is so fixed that you you can't deviate from it. Yeah, I think when you're mm -hmm. sort of in your early twenties, it's it's not a bad thing to have one or two options. Yeah, definitely. Um, you don't know where those decisions or the opportunities yeah, might take you. It change a lot, won't you? I mean, don't know about you, but certainly. I did, but mm. like I say, I, I was lucky. I, I fell into uh, into accountancy, and it, it works for me. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. I think that's one difference between us actually is that you you have had an end goal in mind, but you're not fixated on, like you said, where you was going to go. But like with me, I've just been whatever opportunity came my way, I just sort of took that and went with it, and I don't know brought me here it's, now yeah, to this position where personality characteristics I mean you're much more entrepreneurial aren't you um, and I guess I'm a bit more um, sort of secure in that respect mm. so. I know okay so I've kind of I'm kind of finished with you now oh thanks <laughs> unless there's uh, I can't really well thanks for inviting me over and thanks for listening that's alright yeah thanks everyone for listening to my accountant buddy who I'm trying to well, I figured if I can make him sound interesting, I can make anyone else sound interesting. So hopefully I've done that. Um, I don't know if you want to do a quick role reversal we were talking about. Yeah, let's have a go at this. See if, can, see, uh, see, see, if you, see if we can see if you hijack, want to do the job. Hijack your podcast. <laughs> yeah, go for it. It's hard when you've written anything down, isn't it? <laughs> Some good questions coming up here. Yeah. So you just moved into St. Blasey? Yeah, just moved to house with uh, Jen and little boy Roo. Yeah. How are you finding being a father? Uh, it's quite difficult at times with moving house as well. That was it was a lot of a lot to to get used to, but um, it's brilliant. He's so cool. He just every day I just walk through the door and he smiles at me and you just can't ask for anything. Very rewarding. Oh, yeah. brilliant. It's brilliant, and he just he's just smiling all the time, and it's just the little things that he does. It's it. I, I know it just sounds like anyone else saying about their own kid, but it is pretty awesome. You should give it a go, mate. <laughs> is it <laughs> is it in line with your expectations? Um. Yeah. I wasn't. I mean, I've got two younger siblings that I've watched grow up as well, so I kind of already had an expectation. Anyway, and yeah, I, don't, I wasn't expecting much different. I, I suppose I would have, didn't think he would go this long without, without not, I thought he would be sleeping through the night by now, yeah. but it isn't too bad. He's, he, he goes to bed pretty good time. He goes to bed at a pretty, he wakes up at a pretty reasonable time and he just wakes up, has his milk and goes back to sleep. And Jen deals with so much of it, so, you know. All in hand. Yeah, so she's, hand. yeah. yeah. She's got it locked down. Any plans for her anymore? <laughs> no, not for a minute. I've just I've only just I've only been in this house two and a half months, so I'm like just trying to I've not even got many pictures up on the wall yet, so I'm get this sorted first. 
and then maybe we'll uh, we'll look at it again. How's that? How um, are you enjoying? Obviously, it's your your first time, and it's a lovely home. I'm not just saying that. It's, and uh, how have you found all the sort of DIY? And is that something you enjoy? Is it something you you feel quite confident with? Um, I can't say I'm confident as such. I'm not. I've given it a whirl. I put a sh- I put a shelf up the other day. Good. Which was alright. Yeah, I've done I've done a few bits and bobs, but I think Jen's more nervous about it than me. Uh, <laughs> but no, I'm I'm quite happy to give it a go. I mean, what's what's the worst that could happen, really? I mean, the wall's not going to fall down. Well, no, I don't expect the wall. It's unlikely. <laughs> it's unlikely. So you know, as long as the walls are up and the roof's still on, I can I'm sure we'll be fine. Yeah, you'll have a go. You're quite a confident person. Yeah, it took me ages to to have a go, but it's, yeah. it's quite rewarding again, isn't it? Once you, um, in some the simplest things, put the shelf up level, etc. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, it was quite pleased when it went up. Yeah. I, was, I was like, ah, and it's still there. Ideal. I I found the hardest thing is collecting all the tools. Obviously, if you're in the trade, you you know you you have to have those tools, don't you? Yeah. Uh, greatest example was recently took down a, a fence panel and needed to sort of cut it up. To, to dispose of it effectively. Yeah. And obviously a manual sort of handsaw next door neighbours got a big set like effectively big oh, set yeah. sort of like straight up through it. Yeah. Job done. Job done. Yeah, yeah, I was quite pleased that um a moving in present from my dad was a a, a um a cordless drill. Yeah. So I was like, oh that's brilliant. Like that's that makes hell of a difference just to so many things, yeah. Um but yeah I'm slowly trying to accumulate Tools. Good, good, good. Yeah. So let's let's talk about this podcast then. Uh, this is obviously a new thing. I've kindly been invited around this evening to sort of help you on a bit of a Q and A. Yeah. Um, where do you see this? Where do you see the podcast going? Let's give our, our listeners a bit of a feel for yeah. what they can expect with future podcasts. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping. I mean, on Sunday, which we're coming up, I'm got, um, I'm speaking to our friend Mike, Dio, who runs a farm. Um, in around Bobbin, so that's really interesting. I'm going to talk to him about his farm and just general ag- uh, the agriculture in, in Cornwall and see his thoughts on the whole thing. Um, so that's like one way it's going to go. And, but I'm interested in how his business works and actually how lots of different people's business work, like we were discussing earlier. Just that is what I'm really interested in. So it's kind of a, a business focus, is that? Yeah, I'm, ultimately, I'm, or, or? I'm my. Focus is, my focus is on Cornish businesses and community projects, yeah, etc. And, and, and co- helping Cornish people. That's it, yeah. On their path to whatever career it might be. That's right, yeah. I'm trying to like provide everyone with, you know, just get the message out there to people that, you know, people start businesses every day and, you know, they can do the same. And it doesn't always take much. And people see, I think... One thing that is daunting is that people seeing a big business or a business running, they think, how do they get to that stage? How do they How do they just like have everything there done? And they don't see, they see the finished product. They don't see the work that's gone into the early stages to build them up there. Like we were saying about accumulating tools, it's the same sort of thing, I think, in business in a lot of times. You don't always have the big injection of capital and you do have to just slowly accumulate yeah, it depends very much on the on the nature of the business, doesn't it? I, I think it is. It, it, it's certainly tough to, to get a business off the ground, isn't it? It's, there are finance avenues out there, but although ultimately, if you've got a good idea, I, you know, I, I do think you can take it places. But yeah, it, it's not easy. It's no. just a couple of years. No, no definitely not. That's it. It's just that's why this is pretty cheap at the minute. <laughs> Borrowed equipment. Oh yeah, thank you very much to... Uh, oh yeah, thanks to uh, Lee Frost and Mike Hancock and uh, Thomas Tuckwell, Tuckwell for uh, lending me their uh, mixer and microphones and stuff to do this. Uh, it's been a big help. Um, I'm going to be using it for a few more episodes until I can Christmas where I can ask for some of these pieces for Christmas. Um, but that's how it's going to go. But just quickly going back to what you're saying, it's really like business focused, but also community projects and local authority people coming in to hopefully talk. Well, I've got, we've got our friend D. Marks, works with Cormac, doesn't he? Oh, brilliant, yeah. yeah that, so we can talk about roads. Yeah, he's a, 
Yeah, I'll have a chat about that one. He's yeah, got some interesting ideas. Definitely. So, yeah, that should be good. Any other questions? Any other thoughts? So, you, you're not playing football anymore? No, I was, no. Um, obviously I was playing for the Pandas as well. The Pandas, and you were, you were our um, sort of media guy, weren't you? Yeah, I started off our Facebook page. Which right. seems to be quite successful, actually. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of followers. Yeah. And, um, a lot of people tend to engage in the, the, the uh, posts that are put up. They do, they do. They used to like your interviews. Yeah. Most match interviews are always good. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's my early days of uh, media, I suppose. I thought they were doing quite well, but I think like it was hard to film the games and be involved and all you know be involved in the media side of it as well as um, playing the games. Mm. And, you know, most games I was playing ninety minutes, so it was it was hard to even you got subbed off or something to just even film the last ten minutes. Yeah. So, but yeah, I tried. I tried to do a bit, but I, with um, a ten month run. 10 month old son and a new house I've, and this podcast I want to sort of get going I've kind of felt the need to take a step back from 11 a side Saturday football and just playing six a side on, uh, on a Monday night now good just to free up a bit of time enjoyable yeah um, and obviously one of your goals that you kind of mentioned to me before is that you wish uh, businesses to advertise on your podcast um, and yeah. that way to help Businesses get their name out there and, and certainly target any sort of local events that are going on. So, if with that in mind, like, I guess if there are any businesses out there that you'd wish to have a radio mention, um, I guess you'd encourage them to come forward. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I've definitely um, said definitely a few times, haven't I? But uh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it would be great just to have people, you know, businesses come forward and advertise. I mean, that would be great. Um, obviously, but actually, I'd rather them come on and talk to me about their business. Uh, I think that's what I'd encourage more. Um, obviously, the sponsorship and advertising side of it would just help me keep it going and be able to expand what I'm doing, um, hopefully to some video content as well. Um, but that would mean I have to free up some more time, i.e. probably not be working or cut down my hours somehow. Um, but yeah, definitely. I, I want to speak to all kinds of businesses from all over the county and discover how they got started, how, what they do now, and where they've come from. Really. And I guess you'd probably you'd be interested to have uh, uh, businesses at, at different stages. Yeah, certainly a couple of new startups, a few established businesses. Yeah, I oh, 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 hugely um, startup companies. I hugely encourage. If you've only been running for twelve months or six months or even three years. I mean, you could probably consider a lot of the kids start up since the fifth of the three years, roughly. Yeah. But, you know, in these early stages, definitely come on, because actually I'm hoping, you know, th this is probably the place that you want to be getting your name out to if there's people listening that are interested in businesses, because mm. there's, there's, there's the people that you want to be speaking to, and hopefully I can uh, facilitate that. Uh, a quick question. How, how do you feel about the proposed changes to Bodmin? Um, well, moving out of Bodmin, actually, I've not seen so much of it, but I think when they, when they were being proposed, I, I was quite keen on the idea. Yeah. Um, there's a few things that people have mentioned about you know, like traffic lights and stuff not being there for, you know, for blind people and things like that, which I totally understand, and that's fair enough. Um, you know, that's something that could also be put in. It's just reduced, they were talking about reducing the, the traffic lights in the, along Denison Road and what have you. But I think any money that is being spent on the town is worth being spent on the town. I mean, it needs some, probably is in need of some sort of clean up or, what's the word? Refurbishment isn't the right word, but it does need some money being thrown at it. And, I mean, yeah, change is good. Change is good. Change is good, isn't it? I, th I think the um, the cycle routes are logical, given close proximity to obviously trails both Cardigan and Unlearned Hydrock. Yeah, that seems to be their long term goal, isn't it? 
for for Bobby to yeah. try and make it yeah a so-called so friendly town. Look at what's around you and, and work with your strengths. Mm. And hopefully that that will bring people into the town, whether it will or not. It's, it's a debate for another time, but yeah. Um, but you've got to start somewhere. And correct. You, you, yeah. You can't. It's just. It's not something. That's just going to happen. You can't just like turn the town around by getting a few big shops in. That's it. I, I think the outlook for Bodmin looks very positive over the next certainly short, short to medium term. The Calworth College opening up. Yeah. Um. So the, the the changes that we've just mentioned there with the the cycle routes, etc. Hopefully they will be the sort of catalyst to further investment in the town. Yeah, definitely. That's the benefit of, of hopefully everyone. Yeah, there's many things that I could talk about about Bobbin. Like I do think that there's an overkill of supermarkets, for example, and I think that that's just winding up because it just kills too many local businesses in more ways than one. And a lot of people don't. I don't think a lot of people realise that that actually happens, but it's easy to see when you see it. But that's one of my pet peeves. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you, you kind of have a preference for it to return to sort of market town. Yeah. Is that all right? Some well, stalls and well, no, you know, like stalls. I just would rather that we were facilitating local people being employed by themselves or mm. by their by their friends, and that rather than big, big, massive companies that just take all the money away from the town. At, at the end of the day, yeah. all these all these supermarkets, all they do is they're, they're money suckers of the town. They just suck every I mean, penny I've, out. I've right? always had an idea that on granting permission to supermarkets, that on the same site as the supermarket, you would encompass some other local um, businesses. Yeah. A bit like the new uh, Waitrose. Oh, which right. has been given, it's obviously Intura. built in Intura. Yeah. But you've also got um, sort of other local um, Cornish units sort of food units there. Right, yeah. As well. Well, um, again, that's good that it gives you the option because you literally, in Bobbin, you drive to Asda and yes. there's just Asda. Or Sainsbury's or yeah, or Audi. Al- any other business. Yeah, sports yeah, I don't, I don't I'm not preference. I'm, not, yeah. I'm definitely not advertising for Asda, by the way. <laughs> but, yeah, no, just, pe- they, I think the town council went along the route of, oh, but it's create, creating jobs for the town. And, okay, so you create a few jobs, but at the end of the day, it just, it does, the money that comes into the town through those jobs, just all, twice or f- possibly even four times as much gets taken away from the town and gets put straight into the head office of the, those companies. And that doesn't sit right. No, not, for, not for small towns that can't really afford to let money get out, leave the town. You need to try and get your money in the town as much as possible. Yeah, as I'm concerned. True, true. So, but Calliworth College, that, that's yeah. obviously a positive, and you know, it's under construction now, isn't it? Is, is that it, is actually it? what's being built? Because I know that there's, isn't there like a B and M or something being built up there? Is it B and M? A number of things. Going yeah. On oh, is there a number of things? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I'm a bit vague on the details. I, I am as well. I'm not convinced. I really should be reading the news more than <laughs> I am at the minute. Yeah, you have to buy the Cornish Guardian a bit more. Well, that was that was a feature I was thinking of doing as well. Actually. Oh, was it? Yeah, finding a story in the Guardian and reading it out, talking about it. But no, maybe that's us for future days. <laughs> but yeah, no, I definitely need to be back, get back into the news. What spotlight? What do you think of? Um, Brad and Angie's divorce. Who? Brad Pitt, Angie oh. and Julie. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm in, impartial. Impartial to that one. Not, <laughs> not really bothered. I suppose. It's not really news, is it? It's just, oh. No one ever writes a story about anyone else getting divorced, do they? No, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but, no, I'm not really that, <laughs> not that worried about that. There's much more serious things going on that people need to be worried about. Yeah, like uh, peace talks in Syria. Yeah, yeah. I suppose we could. No, I'm not. I haven't got time. For There's no time. I haven't got time to research would, it. Let alone. That would be uh, an interesting one for. Yeah, I'll stick to Cornwall. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit more manageable. Maybe we'll hit Syria another time. Yeah, when I'm like fifty, uh, when it's still going, and we'll see. Oh well, right. I think. Are we good? Have you got any we, more questions? We're done, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. we've done quite well. We've covered 
through quite a few for things. Our listeners by now. Yeah, maybe we've done. I think we've done forty-two minutes. Wow, it's quite good. Really, yeah. Well, if you have made it this far, thank you. And good yeah, night. yeah, definitely. Thanks very much. Thanks, Shane, for joining me. No Thanks worries. For... Pleasure. Yeah, brilliant. All the best, everyone. Cheers and go on. Brilliant. Thanks, Shane, for being the first guest on the KernoCast, and thank you, everybody, for making it all the way to the end of this one. Um, If you enjoyed what you heard, then you can download the next episode, uh, episode two, with my friend Mike Dyer. He's um, a dairy farmer, um, which, so obviously we get into all sorts of, you know, Cornish agriculture, his farm, how it got started, what he's done. Um, Also... If you would like to leave any comments or get hold of me at all, um, you can find us on you know social media, Facebook, etc. Just search KernoCast. And if you'd like to contact me directly with um, an email, then you can. And the email address is kernocast at gmail.com, which is, the cast is with a K, so it's K-E-R-N-O-W-K-A-S-T at gmail.com. Um as you can tell, I'm still getting used to speaking to a microphone and not having someone opposite me to speak to. Uh, but hopefully in time, I'll get better at this. So bear with me if you like the idea of speaking to anybody from around Cornwall, but you don't get the chance, then this is hopefully going to be the place for you to um, to hear it. Um, if you are running yourself a local business or if you are in a community group or even if you're part of a local authority of some kind, um, please get hold of me because I'd love to speak to you about pretty much anything um, and find out what you're doing. Um, Hopefully we can get a good picture and start to figure out what's going on in Cornwall properly. Um, And then hopefully we can move forward and make a better place for everyone. (laughs) That's the goal anyway. Big dreams and all that. We might as well go for it, eh? Brilliant. Right. Cheers and go on, everyone. All best.